my lovelies welcome to my channel here we are doing another reading for you guys this reading is going to be specifically for those that are wanting to look into the connection or relationship that you're currently in uh, we're going to get a little bit deep into it we're going to see exactly what is uh, unfolding as well as how the partner is viewing or seeing the situation what they feel for you um so yeah I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes so that you guys can uh, tune into your energies, feel where you're being pulled towards the most, and then we're going to move forward. As you guys can see, from my left to the right, we're going to be doing set number one here with the wand, set number two uh, with the clear uh, crystal quartz, set number three with the pyrite, and set number four with the rose quartz. So I'll give you guys a couple of minutes so that you guys can tune into your energies, feel the vibration, what um, crystal is calling towards you, and we will get into the reading. Like I said, set number one, set number two, set number three, and set number four. I'll give you guys a couple of minutes. Okay, my lovelies, let's get into the reading. I'm going to pull back um, the other three sets, and we're going to start off with set number one. Okay, my lovelies, let's get into your reading. So for those of you guys that chose set number one with the wand, let's get right into it. Now, in regards how you're coming up, you're, the energy that you're vibrating at the present time, we have the two of pentacles here. So for some of you guys, you are weighing options. For others, you may be feeling like you're at a point where you need to make a decision, but you are refusing to make a choice. Uh, there is a bit of turmoil in regards to your emotions. Uh, it's, I feel you guys really uh, trying to analyze, is it worth holding on? Is it worth fighting for? Is it worth continuing on this path or should you uh, walk away from this? So um, I see a bit of inconsistency in this connection. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with the Gemini. Uh, for others, air, uh, air energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarian type of energy. I also see water here, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Earth energy, uh, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Um, however... The partner's coming up as the lover's card. So that is their placement at this at this present time. I feel that they may be going through the same thing that you're feeling right now. Like they're unsure of they should if they should continue putting effort in this connection. I'm going to tell you guys off the bat what I'm feeling is a lot of you guys are very argumentative in this connection. It could be you or it could be your partner. But I see you guys extremely defensive and... What they're saying here is this is a repeating cycle. Uh, this is, um, like I said, this could be your partner's energy or this could be your energy. It is a general reading. However, what they're saying here is there is a almost like a never-ending cycle. I, I feel that for some of you guys, when you get, when you're getting to know someone, when we are talking about dating and romance, you're extremely guarded. And the reason why you're extremely guarded is because it hasn't been particularly easy uh, for you when it comes to relationships. You could be carrying a lot of uh, past traumatic experiences in previous relationships. There is almost a feeling of uh, the need to really guard your heart. Um, so I feel like uh, they're showing me this wall. Uh, and that to me is a representation of a person that... Uh, guards their heart you protect yourself you're very mindful um, of the people that you allow around you or even uh, to get emotionally invested in someone you really have to see that they put effort in the connection um, but the moment that you start to become emotionally 
uh, connected to this individual or to this person, it's almost like you kind of lose yourself in the relationship. You obsess over it to the point of watching them or watching what they're doing, watching their social medias, uh, seeing what they're liking is what I'm hearing. Um, now, this could be you or this could be your partner. But again, what they're saying is this is a repeating cycle of behavior from previous experiences. So even if you feel like you have been putting effort in healing yourself or putting effort in overcoming those experiences, what they're telling you is there's still on a subconscious level something that you really need to be mindful about. Um, because I feel like I, like I said, they're telling me there's a lot of, someone in this connection is extremely argumentative. Uh, even if you're trying to give some type of, uh, you know, um, constructive criticism, uh, they take it very personal. Um, so again, they could be extremely defensive. And what they're saying here is um, your partner may also be experiencing a feeling of being at crossroads, not really knowing uh, if they want to continue putting effort or not. For some of you guys, there could be almost a feeling of you guys are kind of um, little by little, it almost feels like you're distancing, like the distance between you guys is becoming very evident. And this is on both spectrums, meaning you and your partner are acknowledging that. Um, the relationship itself is the princess of swords. So again, it's almost like you guys are extremely prideful. Um, you guys look to the most uh, minute details um, when it comes to, as an example, if, you know, if they tell you, I'm going to go to bed and you see them that they're online or that they're posting something. It's like you are literally trying to trace, you know, every step that they've made. Um, now, th if this isn't you, this could be your partner. And again, what they're saying here with the Princess of Swords is that there's a lot of ego involved in this connection. And it's based off of fears. It's based off of uh, perhaps wounds that haven't been completely healed. Um, there is a feeling of scarcity um so this could signify constantly thinking or feeling um like the more you're wanting your partner to give you attention it's like the more you feel you're losing control of the relationship or of the person that you're dealing with and this is a mindset that you put yourself in and the moment you start to experience or feel some type of loss of control or like they're changing or like their behavior is changing. You go into this mentality that it's like a snowball effect. Uh, con and it's almost like you can't help it. You can't, um, you can't help it because it's like the more you think about it, the more you look into what they're doing, the more it's like it keeps just adding up and adding up. But again, what they're telling you here is it has to do with your mindset. It has to do with even if obstacles are not there, um, you focusing on the negative or focusing on what your partner does that upsets you only creates more experiences that make you feel like your partner is unpredictable or you don't know what they're doing or you constantly feel like you have to be watching what they're doing. Um, so again, there's this is a mindset that you need to change. Now, the advice here with the two of swords is you need to stop being so indecisive. Um, you need to be assertive, assertive in what it is exactly that you want. For some of you guys, you may be tempted. You may be in this, um, in this vibration of whenever things get difficult or whenever the relationship starts to become rocky, you may start to entertain other people. You may communicate with other people, whether it's on social media, whether it's through texting, whatever it is, it's like you are literally setting yourself up for failure because the fear of feeling like you don't want to, the feeling that you don't want to be left hanging or you don't want to feel like you wasted your time in a connection um, is something very prominent in you. The moment you start to feel like you're losing control of the relationship or they're changing, you may be tempted to talk or communicate with other people as backups and what they're telling you here again you go back to that of the mentality of your mindset and feeling like there is scarcity of 
uh, either reciprocation or uh, that they're going to want to elevate this connection. So basically what they're telling you here, for those of you guys that chose set number one, is that yes, in relationships, it takes two people to make it work. But it also um, speaks about you need to stop setting yourself up for failure. So when I say that, what I'm hearing is everything is going good. And when it doesn't, you start to look around or entertain other people or communicate with other people because you don't want to waste your time. You're such in a rush of trying to create some type of commitment. Um, and by you entertaining other people, just in case this doesn't work out, it's like you're already predicting that it's not going to work out. And this could be, again, a repeat cycle, something that you've done in the past. You got to acknowledge that because by you acknowledging that, you're going to understand that you feel like you want to have the upper hand when it comes to love and when it comes to romance. But by you saying, well, if it doesn't work out here, let me put my attention over here, you're not fully investing or committing wholeheartedly to the connection. So you're not really being able to see it manifest or come to its full potential because your energy is scattered, because you are not sure what it is that you want or the moment that it becomes difficult, you're like, I don't know, it's like one foot is out the door, the other one is in, you're not sure what to do. So again, you're kind of setting yourself up for the relationship not to progress, and it's something that you need to acknowledge and stop doing. Now, in regards to the likely outcome here, we have the Nine of Cups. So the Nine of Cups represents emotion of fulfillment. It also speaks about... Um, getting to a point of contentment, getting to a point of, of happiness, especially because it's underneath the lover's card here. Um, so again, it starts with your mentality and how you react uh, to certain circumstances and situations when we're dealing with the person that you're dealing with. Um, now, on the side here, what they're telling you is have faith in destiny. Uh, we have the argument card, which again speaks about a very intense connection or a very intense partnership or connection that you're experiencing um and we go back to that of what they were saying when you like you're so guarded but the moment you become emotionally connected to someone uh there is some type of possessiveness or some type of um protectiveness that just triggers you um and it's like there is this desire to have some type of control that's something you have to work in they're also giving you here the look for the signs. Um, so again, if you feel like, you know, you're unsure of what it is that you want to do, either you commit to this connection 100% um, and decide, you know, this is where I'm going to put all, this is where I'm going to invest all my time and energy. And what they're telling you is there's a, a probability of you being able to manifest a commitment, a long-term relationship uh, with the with this person. If you guys are able to work on um, certain traits, kind of like you guys are bringing out the worst in each other, but when you guys are good, you bring out the best in each other. It's about knowing how to balance that. Now, the next cards we have here is, my darling, please have just a little more patience. So there's definitely someone in this connection that needs some maturing to do or some type of elevation. Uh, it could be you. Uh, that you need to work on your mindset and what you're constantly thinking about, being more optimistic and more positive. The next card here is you are my anchor, my star, my hope, my love, my light. Um, so there is definitely a connection. I just feel that you may continuously feel like you guys are at, at, at odds with each other because pride gets involved, because you guys both have been hurt in the past. And because there is almost this defensive mechanism that once it kicks in, it's like you, there's this desire of wanting to have control of the relationship or the person. Now, if this is not you, this could be your partner. And that's something that they that they have to work through. Uh, definitely something that will bring much more balance to this connection. All right, my lovelies. Okay, let's get to set number two. Okay, my lovelies, for those of you guys that chose set number two with the crystal clear quartz, um, as you guys can see here, we have the three of swords, 
the Queen of Wands, the Six of Pentacles, the Ace of Cups, and the Hierophant. Now, off the bat, what I can definitely sense is that those of you guys that chose set number two, you guys have been through hell and back when we're talking about re relationships, when we're talking about connections, when we're talking about even this connection that uh, you may be dealing with at the present time. Now, the Three of Swords indicates betrayal, loss, hurt. Um, but I feel that this is healing energy that needs to happen. So for those of you guys that chose set number two, there is some type of refusal to heal certain wounds that you've experienced in the past. Now, this could be with the person that you're dealing with, or it can also represent past relationships. Um, with the Queen of Wands, you may be dealing with fire energy, um, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo. I also see Taurus, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, uh, Earth energy as well, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, uh, and Air. So basically all, this, all, all the elements are here present in this reading. However, what they're saying, um, you may be dealing with a person that has a tendency of loving attention. This is a person that uh, could be very, very attractive. Um, or you yourself can be very attractive and it triggers certain certain flags in your person or on you if, if it's vice versa. Um, someone in this connection is definitely lacking confidence in themselves. It's like you're either constantly comparing yourself or constantly um, comparing your partner perhaps with people that you've been with in the past. And this could even be a conversation where you openly tell them um, about your past experiences or your past lovers when, when comparing. And this is something that you need to stop doing. Now, with the Queen of Wands, this is representing the energy of your partner, the person that you're dealing with. So this is a very prideful person. This is a person that um, is a go-getter. This is someone that makes things happen and, and, and it's almost like I'm sensing like when a person walks in a room, they just command so much attention or respect. Um, for some of you guys, I'm getting, okay, so I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting heavy messages here. For some of you guys, you're dealing with a person that perhaps you feel you're unworthy of. Whether it's on the physical aspect, whether it's financially, uh, whether it's you just feel like this person is in some shape, way, or form out of your league. Uh, with the Three of Swords, your mentality has a lot to do with what you've gone through in relationships, okay? I'm going to say that off the bat. Now, this is a person that, like I said, is a go-getter. This is a person that is extremely focused. They, you know... They just make shit happen. Um, and they're very confident in who they are. And what they're telling me here is that you need to work on being confident in yourself, trusting yourself, knowing your worth, knowing what you deserve. Um, and if there's almost like this feeling of it's too good to be true type of energy, what they're telling you is, Stop questioning that because that's what you deserve. You're dealing with someone that is mature in the sense of what they want. And perhaps this is something refreshing. This is something different. This is something you've never experienced. Now, with the Six of Pentacles here as the relationship itself or the dynamic, Six of Pentacles is giving and taking. This is also a representation of a person that is extremely balanced. This is a person that is willing to put in the effort if you're willing to put in the effort. Now, I do have the running card here with the first aid kit. So again, someone in this connection needs to go through some healing. Um, for some of you guys, this could be the partner. If the partner has the characteristics of the Queen of Wands in the negative shadow side, meaning uh, they love attention, they love to... Uh, they, they can carry themselves in a way of being extremely flirtatious. Um, however, um, I feel very strongly and very heavily for the majority of you guys that chose set number one. This is you that needs to work on yourself. 
We have the three of swords here with the first aid kit and running. So there is something, um, there is something that either you're fighting or you're trying to resist because we have a no here. Now, if you look at the top cards, we have choose love, uncharted territory. So for some of you guys, it could be a connection or a relationship where the person is genuinely interested in you. They are genuinely putting the effort or genuinely trying to prove their worthiness to you. Uncharted territory is a representation of feeling very feeling very out of your element or out of your out of the environment that you're used to um, and a quick no. So that to me is a, a, almost a representation of um, feeling like it's too good to be true. That's something that you may experience or you may be experiencing or often questioning or asking yourself. But if we look at the three of swords here with the first aid and the running, this could be a, a defensive self mechanism that you do or have a tendency of doing when people are treating you good. Now, I am getting very strong this message. It may not connect with everyone, but just take it if it resonates. What they're telling you is stop ignoring those that give you attention or the person that is fully wanting to invest in this relationship because you've convinced yourself that they're either too boring or they're not as exciting because this is what a healthy relationship is. It's not always exciting. It's not always, um, you know, strong and, 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 you know, just full of passion. It's not always that way. Um, when you're dealing with the person that is much more mature, that knows exactly what it is that they want, it's going to take longer for them to get upset. It's going to take more for them to, uh, you know, be intense or passionate about uh, certain things, especially when in the process of getting to know someone. Uh, for some of you guys, this could be a person that is extremely, um, like I said, extremely attractive, a person that is extremely like, they're, what I'm hearing is like, they are not who they are from what they seem to be. So it could represent almost like you look at this person and your mind goes to, oh, this is a this is a this is their personality and then you get to know them and you find out they're more predictable than spontaneous they're more methodical and they're more uh, slow in movement or slow in pace when we're talking about relationships um, because they want to see uh, if the person is worthy before they are able to put or fully invest in the connection and in the relationship so it's almost like an enigma is what I'm hearing. So for some of you guys, you may be dealing with the person that is extremely attractive, um, gets a lot of attention, but this person can also be what they don't seem to me, what they don't seem to be, which could be extremely old school, extremely reserved. Um, maybe even attention makes them feel uncomfortable. Um, this is a person that would tend to shy away from the spotlight, but people would assume they're used to getting a lot of attention. So again, if you feel that you're dealing with this person at the present time that is scaring the shit out of you because of how they're treating you in a positive way, of course, stop, you know, creating scenarios that are not there. Stop making it seem as if it's too good to be true that this person is, they must be lying or they may, you know, be putting on this facade, this mask, because what they're telling you is, no, honey, you've been through a lot and you're just used to being treated like shit. And here's a person that is much more mature that is willing to put the effort if you're willing to put the effort, but stop running from a genuine connection because you feel like either you don't deserve it or for for others of you, especially if you're more on the still growing and evolving <laughs> immature type of energy, um, stop running away because you feel like relationships or commitments is almost creating some type of pressure here. Because in reality, I feel that uh, this can actually have the potential for something long term. Um, only because the advice card is the Ace of Cups. Open yourself up, embrace love. Um, 
if you're going to fully commit to a relationship to see how far it can go, you have to genuinely open yourself up and be 100% authentic. Uh, stop creating scenarios or stop creating fights either to trigger the person or to play mind games just so that they can show you that they're interested because this is an energy that is much more mature. Um, they may not be into games, mind games, uh, and that could quickly turn into, uh, you know, them not necessarily wanting to put any more effort because they're not messing around. They're not wasting their time just to waste their time. There is potential for marriage or commitment here with the Hierophant. Um, so again, what they are telling you is if it's you the one that needs to work on um, creating or running away from connections that are deep because only because you feel like you may lose yourself in the relationship or you may lose some type of freedom and you're viewing relationships or commitments as a pressure. If you feel at this point that you're not ready for that and there's still more healing that needs to happen, then be completely honest with the person because you may actually be missing out on something that may turn into long term. Now, the cards that we have here is I am aware but don't quite understand the connection. This could be your, your partner as well. Remember, my dear, we will unite in the end. So I feel that for those of you guys that chose set number one, there is a lot of self-healing that needs to happen. Um, for some of you guys, you may actually be dealing with the Three of Swords here. You may be dealing with a person that um, is keeping you from, from a true authentic connection um, that you're going to be experiencing in the next coming weeks. Uh, so again, very strong. And this is only for those of you guys that, you know, obviously this is looking into you and the partner's relationship and how it's progressing. Um, but it can also represent to those of you guys that are cross watching, maybe you're single and you're just interested and you chose the set. Um, what they're telling you is work on yourself, work on yourself. Don't jump into relationships because love is coming towards you. And when it does recognize it, understand it, especially if it's mature, loving energy, um, you know, relationships are, are not always meant to be extremely passionate and intense because what starts off strong and heavy burns out quickly. Okay. All right, my lovelies, let's go to set number three. Set number three. I'm not sure if you guys can see this. Let me turn it a little bit there. So there's no glare in the cards. I just noticed that. All right, so off the bat, those of you guys that chose number or set number three, um, we have the getting to know you, the lust, and the cleanse. So off the bat, what I'm sensing is this could have been a situation like a um, physical relationship or a relationship that started physical first. Um, so what I mean by physical, it could have been something that started off, you know, like a fuck buddy, you know, type of situation. It could have been, um, something that, you know, there was only gatherings or meetings at night. Uh, for others of you, you could have met this person at night. Um, but what I'm getting very strongly is like, there is a very intense, passionate connection. Um, and they're telling me it's physical. So those of you guys that chose set number three, you're definitely very like attracted to this person or very physically um, pulled towards this person. Like the sexual energy is just like you can really feel it um, in the air. <laughs> very intense type of connection. However, they're giving me some red flags here because the getting to know you is signifying to me that you are either falling or have been falling for the idea of who you think this person is versus really falling for who they really are. So for some of you guys, I'm almost getting like the person, you know, is kind of like putting their arm like out, like they have their arm. Um, what's that word that they say? Um, they keep you at arm's length. Um, so for some of you guys, it could be almost like they don't bring you around their friends or they don't bring you around their people. Basically, they try to uh, keep it more on the download type of thing. Um, 
So it's kind of worrisome, I'm not going to lie, because what I'm hearing is you need to pay attention to how they make you feel versus paying attention to how they act. So this could be a person that is extremely, extremely good at telling you bullshit. This is a person that can seem to come off as extremely confident, extremely prideful. Uh, this could be a person that likes maybe to be a little bit showy because um, we do have here the boast, the bull, and authenticity. So these are very opposite cards, which leads me to believe that you've been authentic or genuine in this connection. Uh, but for some reason, they keep you at arm's length. So there are certain things that they're keeping hidden that they're not completely honest to you about. And what they're telling you is pay attention to how they make you feel. So as an example, if you don't spend much time with them or they don't bring you around their family, around their friends, what does that make you feel? Does it make you feel like, you know, hey, something is off? Um... I find it odd if like after a while that you've been dealing with this person, they still want to keep you uh, kind of like unknown, you know, to their to their inner circle. You need to start paying attention to that. Now, the card that's representing you is the two of wands. This is you the, the desire to want to create some type of partnership. So I definitely see you invested in this connection. However, their card is the nine of swords. A lot of anxiousness, a lot of stress. Um... A lot of worry in regards to how they're viewing this connection so it could be that with the ace of wands here there's almost like they understand or they know that at this point you're starting to question or you're starting to ask a little bit more questions than you did before and it's really putting the stress on them um and it's almost like for some i feel that there are certain things that are going to be coming out in the open about this person that you're dealing with um, again, like I said, I feel heavily like this is a physical connection. That's how they're viewing it. Um, and for some, like I said, with the moon and the 10 of pentacles leads me to believe that you may be dealing with the person that is either in a commitment, in a committed relationship, or they're still dealing with a past relationship where there was some type of commitment or, um, children could be involved as well. But I feel like if they're telling you that they're not dealing with an ex or with an ex-partner, they may be bullshitting you. They may be lying to you because um, we can clearly see here that uh, the moon, meaning shadow, confusion, illusion, uh, next to the Ten of Pentacles, they're trying to um, keep some type of commitment or some type of responsibility hidden. Um, now the relationship itself is the ace of wands uh this is obviously talking to us about uh you know physical the physical this is fire type of energy fiery passion desire but it is coming up as an ace of wands so that is like the spark of a physical connection the spark of something that started but never fully got to the growth in this connection um, the advice here is basically they're telling you, they're asking you to be completely honest with yourself. To be honest with yourself in regards to this 10 of pentacles. If you're looking for commitment and you're looking for something long term, something that may turn into, like I said, commitment or marriage, um, stop falling for people or, or the illusion of the potential that they have and start seeing them for what they really are or who they really are. Um, if they're not wanting to bring you around their family, if they're not wanting to bring you around the friends, if they're not introducing you as a girlfriend or as a boyfriend, you have to be honest with yourself. A per Will a person that has genuine intentions with you for something long term, are they going to, you know, introduce you as a friend? Are they going to introduce you or not introduce you at all? Um, obviously, the first thing that a person wants to do once you've gotten through uh, that getting to know each other stage is 
bring them into your world. And if they're not doing that and they're refusing to do that, even if you've requested that or asked for that in the past and they still have yet to do that, then you kind of have to take a step back and realize, okay, this is who they really are. I need to take it for what it is and make the decision because there is a need to release what no longer is serving you here with the cleanse card. So again, I feel that this person may be keeping you uh, from a true and authentic connection or relationship. Now, the next cards we have here is spiritual healing will raise your vibration and give you the strength. So again, I feel very strongly that what Spirit is telling you is stop wasting your time. You deserve much more better treatment than how they're making you feel or how they're treating you. Um, if you don't see that this person is, you know, looking for you, if they don't text you throughout the day and they can go on throughout the whole day without communicating with you, it doesn't mean that they're busy. It just means they're not giving you, they're not wanting to give you that type of attention. Um, a person that is genuinely uh, interested in you, even if they have a million things to do in the day, they will figure out at least a minute to send a text. So again, be honest with yourself. The next card here is, I miss you, you're always on my mind. So this is the contrast energy, meaning your energy. I do see you emotionally invested and connected in this partnership uh, or this potential uh, connection that you've been dealing with. But what they're telling you is, it's time for you to see through things, especially through the bullshit. Uh, you're an authentic person, a uh, person that, you know, gives loyalty or gives respect and uh, straightforward, even like a straight shooter. And what they're telling you is you deserve much more better than what you're settling for. I'm hearing you keep asking for true love, uh, stop settling. So I hope this gives you guys some type of guidance. All right, my lovelies, let's go to set number four. You guys that chose set number four, um, we have here the Queen of Cups, the World Card, the Seven of Swords, the Four of Pentacles, and the Four of Cups. So we have two fours here indicating to me that there is a desire or a want to create some type of stability. Unfortunately, this stability has been built on illusion or lies, um, deceit. We have the Seven of Swords here indicating the relationship or connection itself. And it's coming up um, in that position, the Seven of Swords. So there is lying, sneakiness. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with a person that is married or that is committed. I do see you emotionally invested in this situation. It could have been a situation where uh, this person told you that they were in the process of some type of separation, some type of divorce. Um, but at this point with the world card, I feel like you know better than that, or you should know better than that. Um, again, seven of swords, they're not being completely honest or transparent with you. And the partner's coming up with the card of the world, uh, which indicates to me some type of elevation or some type of commitment that they are entangled in. Um, your card is the queen of cups. So I know that this connection is genuine on your part. Um, however, if you're not dealing with the person that is married, this is a person that has promised you or has tried to make it seem as if they're wanting commitment. But in reality, uh, this is a person that is emotionally unavailable. They like everything around them is just like they don't put effort, they, whatever it is that they promise you they're going to do, they never come through with their promises. It's like a constant being let down. Um, you have the passion, new life, and maybe card here. So this is indicating to me the potential to meet someone that is going to be coming into your life rather quickly in the next coming months. Um, I feel that those of you guys that chose scent number four, should you continue to deal with this connection or with this person that is extremely like their character is extremely questionable um what they're telling you is like you're keeping yourself on this cycle of constantly being like feeling having faith in someone but constantly being let down now you have the intimacy card the shame and solitude 
So again, I, I feel that for the majority of you, you already know this person is in a commitment. Like I said, they may have lied about the circumstances, um, but what they're telling you is like you're ignoring uh, the fact that it, it's been a bit, a bit, it's been a while. Um, if they're still not trying to show you that they're no longer invested or that they're no longer dealing with the person from the past, it's never going to happen. This person is not looking for any type of commitment. Um, with the Four of Pentacles here, this is your advice card. And what they're telling you is, you know, the Four of Pentacles is like the maze. Um, it's the mazer. So they're telling you, you know, there is almost like a need for you to know your worth, know what you deserve and protect your energy um, from being, you know, basically from wasting your time. Um, because the likely outcome is the Four of Cups. So the Four of Cups is feeling let down. It's feeling like, you know, whatever opportunities are coming your way, you're ignoring them. You are basically not putting your eyes on anyone else because you feel like something may come from this. For some of you guys that are dealing with this situation, it's almost like a feeling of, I've put up with so much bullshit. I've gone through so much with this person, like something has to give. There's like a hopefulness to it, like a a hoping that I that it will be worth it in the end. But with the Four of Cups, they're telling you, no, sweetheart, you need to move on. What you're doing is you're wasting your time. Uh, you're allowing this person to continuously keep dabbling with you and other people. Um, you're allowing them to basically do as they please. And you're not really putting your foot down. You're not. And you have to keep in mind that we teach others how we want to be treated based off of the bullshit that you put up with. So, and again, intimacy with shame. I feel that even those of you guys that are unaware that this person may be in a commitment or some type of commitment, like deep down in your heart, ask yourself, like, is this something you've convinced yourself that, you know, that it's worth fighting for, that it's worth, you know, um, that it's worth being hopeful for or are you getting to the point of like okay now i'm just becoming like there's a difference between being hopeful and being like delusional and what they're telling you here is that you need to open your eyes you need to see things for what they really are stop hoping and wishing if the person is not putting effort stop hoping and wishing if they're not doing what they're supposed to do to completely end whatever connection they've been dealing with or are dealing with um, solitude could represent the need to have some time to, to yourself, to find yourself again, to detach yourself from this connection that it almost feels like extremely, like extremely draining. You know, I'm just, just looking at the cards, like I feel like this tiredness, like almost like my mouth, my mouth, <laughs> My mind is becoming cloudy to the point that I said mouth, meaning mind. My mind is coming um, foggy. And, and it's based off of, you know, feeling exhausted, feeling tired, feeling like you're constantly, you know, looking or watching at what they're doing or their stories are not adding up or what they're telling you just doesn't make any sense at this point. It's like you have to pull your energy back. And understand that even if this person was deceptive at some point in this connection, moving forward, it is only you the one that has chosen to remain in that deceptive energy and that lying and cheating energy because you know better or you should know better by now. Now, the next cards we have here is we learn from our karma so we will be strong you may be dealing with the karmic energy, a karmic relationship. That could be the reason why it's extremely difficult for you to pull away from this partnership. But um, definitely karmic relationships are extremely intense, extremely passionate, and extremely difficult uh, to move on from. It's almost like a feeling like you just can't move on from them. But you have to make that rational decision for yourself. Because I do see new love coming in. You have the passion card, new life, and the potential... Um, the potential to happen is there in regards to finding your happiness. Unfortunately, I don't see it happening with this person. 
um, again, I feel that there is almost an element of like some type of promise that they didn't they didn't come through on or it could have been that it started off with them creating some type of illusion of what was really going on in their connection with the past um but again like i said you're at a point now where what they're telling you is you know open your eyes um, don't allow these people to continuously keep walking all over you or to, you know, stop sweeping questions or doubts or fears under the rug and start to address them now. I also have here, I daydream, uh, what I will say to you so much I want to say. So I feel that for a lot of you guys, it's almost like a frustrating type of energy. Like I said, I feel extremely drained. So I feel that for some of you guys, this is a cycle where you just at this point feel exhausted. Um, there's almost like a feeling of suppressed emotions. Maybe you don't feel like you can open up or fully express how you feel because maybe they make you feel like you're crazy. But in reality, they know what the fuck they're doing. So it's almost like playing the, the stupid one, the one that doesn't know or the victim. You're always judging me. You're probably the one that's cheating, that type of scenario when they know exactly what it is that they're doing. So rise to the occasion, my lovelies. You guys deserve better than that. Don't settle uh, for mediocre when you can have greatness, okay? I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. I hope it gives you some type of insight and clarity, and we will see each other soon. Till then, bye.